Welcome to the Sales Chaos Theory Podcast, the go-to audio experience for navigating the ever-evolving landscape of sales conversations. Hosted by the dynamic duo Tim Ohai and Brian Lambert, this is your invitation to dive deep into the world of value communication like never before. In a market flooded with unpredictability and constant change, Sales Chaos Theory is your guiding light, offering insights, strategies, and the much-needed clarity to help you find the patterns and thrive amidst the mayhem. This is Sales Chaos Theory, where we make sense of the complexity in the market and help you lean into it to rise above the fray and land more deals. Let's dive in. All right. Hey, I am here with uh, Jim, a VP of Marketing. And uh, Jim, as we go into this interview, I just want you to take a few moments to share whatever you want to say a little bit about your role um, and the Mm -hmm. kind of thing you work on, if you could. Yeah, so I work uh, in the digital division uh, of a uh, PR and communication agency. And uh, my role is to help our clients um, really harness the power of of content and influencers uh, through engagement uh, and social media and other types of uh, similar influencer or brand content um, to really spark conversations about their brands. Uh, particularly online. Um, My work does branch off into offline campaigns and tactics, um, but because I'm in the digital division, uh, most of it is digital. Okay. And and without going too deep into your business, I know you work predominantly with Fortune 500s and large, large companies um, Mm -hmm. as your your space, and you yourself are representing a a company that's um, significant uh, in, in what you do, correct? Yes. Okay, cool. Mostly big yeah. companies, yep. Yeah, right. Cool. So so here's what we want to do. I'm going to ask you three basic questions, and then like I, my normal self, I will let my ADD kick in here at some point, and I'll probably <laughs> ask you questions off of questions. But uh, let's start with the first one, and it's the idea of pressures and trends that affect your role. So when you think about the kinds of pressures and trends that affect your role as a, a marketing VP, what are those things that come top to mind? Uh, the, the pressure is that my industry is always changing. I mean, I could say digital and social is changing by the minute, and I wouldn't be wrong. Uh, the, the pressure and, and or the, the key to success there is to recognize what changes are significant enough, right? Uh, which changes are significant enough or have reached critical mass enough for it to be a practical exploration for our clients. Um, you know, our clients are in general, larger clients, it's, it's harder to turn things around in, in a, for a large, uh, enterprise. So, um, when they start moving on something, we've got to make sure we commit to moving on it. Uh, you know, small, small tests here and there, uh, much harder for smaller, for larger clients than let's say startups. So it's really, uh, I'm in a constant state of vetting opportunities, platforms, resources, and tools, uh, for my clients. So are you saying, uh, let me go back to the concept, you know, that you're bringing at the beginning, you have technologies constantly changing, and that in mm-hmm. itself is changing, complete change of behavior. But are you saying that the technology is actually changing faster than your customers can keep up with in terms of what their strategies are? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. And the key is to figure out which are the most significant ones to focus our attention on. Um, so there's that balance, that perpetual balance I have to, to, to really handle uh, uh, between uh results and kind of innovative cutting edge things because everyone wants to be innovative and cutting edge but they don't want to be the cutting edge you know company that's not getting results so um you know like i said i'm in a constant state of vetting so i'm talking to vendors all the time um i rely on 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 vendors as well as as news and social media feeds to figure out what's out there um what are the best choices what's making the biggest impact out there so it's a very uh dynamic ecosystem that i that i work in wow well so that leads us right into the into really the next question and that's the idea of the kinds of problems that you have to navigate most often um what Mm -hmm. kind of problems would you say are um most common uh and then also the ones that are most complex uh in my industry or my segment specifically the most common problem is definition Honestly, it's, uh, you know, when, when people talk about, um, for example, uh, you know, word of mouth advertising versus influencers versus this or that, this, this, you know, the, the social 
the social media industry and the influencer world is, is, is changing so much that people come at it defining different things. What I consider an influencer uh, might not be considered by other brands to be influencers. You've got the problem of quality versus quantity versus content type. Uh, and there are tons of companies out there um, seeking to or claiming to measure uh, influence, me- uh, increase influence, increase word of mouth, increase this or that. And everyone's out there using a different definition. So yeah. the challenge for me is to really figure out where people are coming from, from a client standpoint as well as from a vendor standpoint. Um, you know, just one example, how many crowdsourcing platforms are, are out there today? Dozens. Right, and they all seem to do a different thing. They all seem to, to tap a different type of influencer, uh, and it's my job to figure out which is the one that's doing what I need it to do based on my definition of, of what I feel is most influential or, uh, or effective, uh, as well as my clients. Um, hmm. And that is a very confusing world. So it's, it's, is it fair to say that you almost have to match metrics? I mean, in terms of what somebody wants to measure their success by with, some, with what somebody is selling? And that the metrics match up, or or, or do you actually try? Yeah, to... sometimes it's 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 more complex than just metrics or defining metrics, right? Sometimes it's it's uh, it's choosing which metrics are are relevant at all, um, <laughs> right? And so and so, like I said, um, you know, everyone's out to sell something, and I don't I don't fault them for it. That's that's the way it goes. <laughs> it's the name but of the game. It's, we all put food on right, our table. Exactly, right? and it's it's this it's the salesperson person's ability to find quickly where, where I'm based or where I'm grounded and talk in that context, right? Um, you know, I know this is very specific to what I do, but hopefully it kind of extends out to, to general sales and marketing. But if someone just says, hey, I've got a new influencer platform you got to check out, it means nothing to me, hmm. right? I, I can name 10 of them, right, yeah. off the top of my head. What I need to know is, hey, our influencer program solves this specific problem, right? Come out with the differentiator right away, do some research and figure out where I, you know, where I need to perform or where someone in my job or position needs to perform and come at it that way because the biggest, best, newest influencer platform is not, it is, the first thing I do is look for an excuse to say, oh, I'm too busy or I don't, I'm not the person who handles it. Right, right, right. Okay, so so we're we're totally dovetailing into the final question, and that's just the things that salespeople do when they're trying to connect with you. So let's start yep. with negative. Let's go. With, what are the worst things a salesperson can do? Um, and then we're going to kind of loop back around, and I think we're going to touch on some of the stuff you just mentioned and talk about right. the best thing. Let's start with the negative because it's always more fun. All right, worst <laughs> things a salesperson can do when trying to connect with you as a VP of right. marketing. Giving me no specifics, right? Uh, number one thing, which, which will, which won't even get me to read the email is an HTML email, <laughs> right? I, I expect the sales process to be a person to person, uh, transaction. If you've never met me and you're sending me an HTML email, I know I'm part of an email list. Yeah. Right. So marketing. Great. If you're a marketer sending me an email, absolutely fine. Right. I understand that, that mass marketing, uh, uh, element of it and I'm perfectly okay with it. But if it's a sales call, I get sales emails. They're done in HTML. Those get okay, so wait, so wait that's, a second. That's, Are you saying you actually will read and respond to mass emails? No, I will not. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I will not. They just don't piss you me. off if they're coming right, from a market. For, right. If it's if it's a newsletter, right, or a general update from a, a vendor, great. HTML is great. I'll even click on them sometimes. But if sure. it's a if it's a if it's a sale that's that's addressed to me personally and saying, Hey Jim, I have something for you, but I know it's an HTML format. Yeah. I've actually tweeted this before. If you look at my tweets, yeah, yeah. right. HTML mail is not, I, I get this continuous sales email from somebody. I forgot who that says, you know, exclusive invitation for you, Jim. And it's an HTML. Yeah. It's not exclusive. It's an HTML, that kind of thing. I get the same ones and I delete them as quickly as I get them too. Right. Personalized invitation for Jim HTML. No, it's not. You're out. So number one, make it personalized. Number two, because it's personalized, you've got the opportunity to connect with me in a personal way. So, uh, a specific problem I might have, uh, a specific feature that differentiates you, something off the bat uh, has to be in there. Because if the email is just, we're, you know, we're the newest, you know, XYZ type of platform, yeah. uh, really innovative, I'd like to take some time uh, and meet with you. Um, you know, it's not giving me any reason to do this. My day is so booked as it is already. It's got to be worth me 
putting off a client meeting, putting off an internal meeting to, to meet a, a new vendor um, that I then have to take through many channels through my organization. I'm not the person who signs the paper to buy this thing. I've got to convince other people. So it's got to be something that, that really I feel helps me personally that gives me the motivation to push it through. And I've done this for a few vendors. Right? I've done this for a few vendors um, because they were able to establish differentiate, differentiation right off the bat. Mm. So I knew what I was getting into. So if I have to ask what's your differentiator, it, it's the battle's half lost. Yeah, no, no. I, well, so I just want to comment. It's interesting that you're saying that part of the problem is actually the internal navigation you have to go through. It's not just the business result or whatever that they're trying to promise. It's actually right. they want to sell how they work with you as much as what they're selling. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. It is. It is very fair. It's it's an effort on my part, right? And it's an effort that I have to take away from doing other things. So I have to really be a champion of it. And it, you know, at the time that I've been at my agency. Um, I've championed a few things and got them pushed through. Some of them I haven't, but the point is I've taken the effort, right. To internally rally the people that need to, to, to sign the final paper, um, to get it pushed through. And I will do it if I feel something helps me or honestly, if I like the person on the other side of the email, if they seem like a personable, per, you know, personable guy or gal, uh, and is really trying to strike or engage with me and strike a rapport, I'm good with that. Which reminds me, the email I hate most are those emails that pretend to be a reply to an old email. Like, yeah. hey, I, I happen to be in town. Um, yes. You know, let's meet up. Like, and I know they've never emailed me before, but the subject line starts with the re dot dot. Yes. There's a, worst. Oh, that's just worst, worst, worst. I live in my own fantasy yeah. world where you're the center of it. Uh, that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, cool. Jim, um, thank you so much for taking time out of your super busy schedule to help us. No I know you've got tons going on. And um, again, uh, really appreciate you sharing your perspective.